Hello and welcome back to my channel. What you see here is a list of puzzles that I have in grid format in the app that's called Puzzle Tracker. Now prior to Puzzle Tracker I was using iCollect which is a way that you can organize all of your jigsaw puzzles by ISBN, brand name, puzzle manufacturer, image, or what have you. I personally decided to switch everything over to this app and I know that it's going rather fast and I probably will slow it down. But I decided to switch everything over to this app because of a special feature that is called, in my words, stopwatch. And I'll tell you more about that in a moment. So what you see here are the four categories of jigsaw puzzles, completed, in progress, waiting list, and wish list. I am depopulating in progress, waiting list, and wish list. And after it depopulates, it will show you the puzzles that I have completed since I started logging them. And here they all are. Now I'm not going to show you my entire collection this way, but I'm switching over from grid mode to list mode so that you can see all of my completed puzzles that I have been tracking. Now there may be one or two that I don't have in here correctly because I haven't really gone through this after the developer who, who was beyond helpful helped me to get my data over. But here you can see all of the puzzles that have been completed as I started tracking them. Now there is one thing, well two things I want to mention. At first you see above there where it says active session, the queen start time 1.33 p.m. And I can open that. That is because I have a current puzzle going on and I don't want to disturb that. The stopwatch obviously has stopped while this video is being made. But here you have all of the puzzles that I've done. And the developer was beyond instrumental by helping me to get this data over as you can see. Now I see like for example rainbow purple and rainbow pink had the same cover. I can fix that but I just wanted to give you an idea of what it looks like. Now again these are completed puzzles not the entire collection because that would take at least 10 minutes. So here I am depopulating this so I can just see what I have in progress and I'm aware of that already and as mentioned it is the queen. I started at 133. It looks like I forgot to stop the stopwatch so I'm stopping it now. So let's go through the menu. You see the first thing there is my name and email which is not a private email since I do reviewing. Then we have different options importing exporting. Now with Manage Data, it shows that I have completed 106 puzzles in July. Well, we know that's not accurate. That simply means it's because of when I started using the app. Going forward, it will track what I do each month. I can switch from list mode to grid mode. And then I can even change the theme. Okay, it's now you see me switching over to grid mode, back to list mode. Green, purple, red blue orange but my favorite color is green so i went back to green uh, obviously you can change the language and other things of that nature i just want to take a moment to show under settings it says contact us if you click that it will start to generate an email and there's important data in there the version of ios that you're using the device that you're using the app build number and things of that nature all of that helps the developer troubleshoot for you if you have any problems with the app. Most of us won't need that. This section here shows when my subscription expires, which is July 27th, because what I have is the monthly version. Now there are three price points here that will show. First you see that I'm paying for this for $3.99. 
Now, I have the monthly plan for right now, but I could switch it over to a premium yearly plan, but it also says premium version $39.99 yearly. I think that's a mistake, but I can talk to the developer more about that. The way that it works is $3.99 per month, $39.99 per year, or $200 for a lifetime subscription. I think they may need to tweak that a little bit. Okay, I currently don't have a wish list, but I am depopulating this so that wish list will turn up. As you see, I don't have anything, but over on Google Chrome, I have Hannah Lynn's puzzle from Jackaroo. So now you will see me adding this particular puzzle to this wish list. Now, I'm not going to buy this as a puzzle, and you'll see why in just a few moments, but I just want you to see how easy it would be to add these to your wish list. Another way you could add it to your wish list, if, if let's say you were in a store, you could simply scan the ISBN right there in the store. But because I am doing this manually, I am adding in the name of the puzzle, the company, the P's count. And so it's a Jackaroo puzzle, as you can see. I struggled a little bit as to figure this out. So you see me typing it in twice, but I figured it out pretty quickly. So then I add it as a field. And when I added it, now it comes as the brand is Jackaroo. The price is $26.99. The artist is Hannah Lynn. You see me making a typo, but it's very easy to backspace and to correct that typo. I did not add in the barcode, but I did add a note here that have as a diamond painting. Yes, I have Crazy Cat Lady as a diamond painting. And then you see me going to my gallery, which I screenshot the picture or the puzzle box. So I click Recents. I go into the latest one. There it is. I select it. And now I have added Hannah Lynn's Crazy Cat Lady to my wish list. Now here I'm looking at this and I realize that I completed a puzzle that I didn't mark. So I'm doing that now. And I rated it as five stars. It was a massacre. I rate the quality for simply because I did have to glue down a couple of the tabs. I wasn't really sure when I finished it, but it had to be early June. So I'm kind of going back and forth between the June date. So I'm going to just say June 5th. I completed the puzzle and then I go down to the bottom and I click the I go back up to the top. I mean, and then I click the button and I mark it as completed. So here I am repopulating the list making sure everything is copacetic and that's what this little clip is here and you may have a similar wait time when you populate or depopulate this based on the size of your collection currently my collection has 302 puzzles if i'm not mistaken one is out for delivery actually so i will be adding in another one soon but i am now repopulating the list and that's what you see me doing right here So here I'm just looking at my waiting list puzzles. Yes, these are all puzzles that I have yet to do. And I just wanted to show you what it looks like in this particular category of waiting lists. I've shown you in progress. I've shown you completed. Now I'm showing you the puzzles that I have yet to do. So this last part of the video, I am populating all the fields completed, in progress, and wish list. So as each since I have over 300 in my collection, it takes a few seconds for it to populate, but I want you to see what it looks like when all four check marks are clicked. Last one I clicked was wish list. And now it shows all of my puzzles. Now I am just about to scroll through these puzzles in the grid view 
which I'm only going to do that rather quickly. So you'll see that populating now. And here you see me scrolling through all of the puzzles that I have. Now, I want to show you something at the end of this clip. So I'm just going to let this little clip play. Now here I'm switching from the gallery view of grid mode to list mode. I'm only going to show you a small handful. First you see my wish list, then my in progress, a completed puzzle, and then you see the puzzles that are in progress. And if you see the full bright picture, it means that I've already completed the puzzle. So here we are at the end of this video. Here is my entire collection, which includes all the categories, completed in progress, wish list, and let me tell you, it's great. I want to say that the import-export aspect of this is a wee bit more difficult to explain in a quick video. So if you have any questions about importing your data from one app to this app, then please feel free to message me and we can do that offline or I can get you in touch with the developer P-Chair Pebrocki. Before I end this video, I wanted to show you the statistics graphic, okay? Granted, I added everything for July, so this shows you what brand of puzzles I have and then what my completed elements looks like that's coming up right now. And then you can share this out if you ever wanted to. And I just thought if you like to share on different forms of social media, that one little aspect of this app I just wanted to share with you. But we're going to call it quits. And I want to thank you so much for watching. And I will definitely be back with more content on this channel, especially since I'm in the process of doing a review video.